start or share my screen. So we do lab three, measurement of laser G. Uh, uh, I wanna, okay. I just needed to change my, I need to use my monitor because it's bigger so I can um, put the simulation on one side and the me uh, lab menu on the other side. Uh, so just a second, I need to rearrange my, So now we can uh, see two screens. Um, so today we're gonna measure a little G. Uh, uh, so before we start, we have to, okay. I think I'm recording now. So uh, before we start, we have to um, do some math, uh, like rationalize. And we know from physics, we need know Newton's universal law of gravity, which is known as F equal to uh, G M1, M2 over R square. So F is the Newton's, Newton's law of gravity, and G is uh, the constant. It is called the gravitational, uh, gravitational, uh, the universal gra uh, gravitation constant. M1, M2 are the two objects, uh, the, the mass of the two objects. R is uh, like the distance between the two objects. Let's say we want to measure the universal uh, gravity of uh, between, um, like a, of a human on the earth. Um, so gravity is like basically the earth has this gravity like um, they uh, kind of uh, attract the body to stand on the land, right? Otherwise we can just float uh, anywhere in the um, outer space. Um, so so for in this example, the M1 could be uh, ourself, let's say a person. And then uh, M2 is uh, a mass of the earth. And the R, R is the distance. Basically it's the radius of the earth because um, it's supposed to be the, the, the distance between two uh, center of a mass. But because our body, our height is so small compared to the radius of the earth. So we just neglect our, like the half from our side. We just take the radius of the uh, earth. So this is, uh, so Newton's law of gravity also uh, is also the main reason that we can measure our weight. So when we are, uh, when we are doing the uh, gravi the, the weight force F equal to mg, so these two should be equal. So what, what I mean by that is, uh, I, let me write down something. Oops. So you basically you have a, like a, a weight force F equal to mg. Mg. This is what we already know the mass. I see what we want. To, I want to read how how much weight I have. Uh, so I just add my. Uh, I just use my mass and then times the uh, gravity. Uh, the 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 little g. 
and it's supposed to equal to this one. So this equation is supposed to be equal, uh, supposed to equal to this one. Uh, so M here is M1 because this is our weight, our mass. So because they both have M1, so we can cancel them out. Cancel them out. So that means uh, the um, so little little. So if when we make the equation of these two, then you cancel M1 out. Then you have a G equal to GME over R squared. So this M is the mass of the Earth, and this R is the radius of the Earth. So this is how um, this is that how deter uh, it determ determine it determines the acceleration. So if we're like, like this, this is like the example we are standing on the Earth. But if we stand on the Moon, so this the mass would be the 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 mass would be the Moon's mass, and the radius would be the Moon's radius. Uh, so this equation is very important. We want to play around with this because uh, when we try to do the experiment here, uh, we're gonna use this. Um, we're gonna use this equation to uh, do some experiment. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, so the first one, uh, we still have to familiar with the simulator. So basically you have, when you open the simula uh, simulation lab, so you can have the screen like this, you can begin. Uh, so basically you have a ball here, right? And you have a planet. So basically you can choose the ball's material, you can choose the radius, the ball material, and you can click this automatically change and the radius how big is the ball just play around with the ball and then you can change the planning um so uh, why we use the ball and planning because we want to randomly choose a planet and we drop a ball and then see to measure little g uh we will we'll, we'll go to different planet so in this planet we have the radius we have mass and you have the the arrow pointing up, pointing down, so you can adjust the numbers. So you can just uh, go to the minimum. And the plan, plan your color, you just like, it, it, it's totally up to you. Um, or you want to change a different name, you can play around with this. And then, then okay, so let's say we select this climate as COBOL, and we want to zoom in, so that means we will uh, now we are just like a far away. Now we want landed on this planet. So we zoom in. So we are now, we are here. And you have a ruler here. You click the ruler. So you will see a ball. The ball, this is the ball we choose before from here. And then, uh, so what we want you to do is let the ball drop at 4.5 meters. If you go up. So, okay, this assume is 4.5 meters. So let the ball drop, you click drop. The ball drops. And then you have, you see this grid? They will, when the ball drops, the grid will measure this, the speed and the time. So when you click this one, just single click, you can see the numbers, the speed and the time. And what you want, what you need to do is fill this information here I say uh, for, uh, for table one, we already choose the mass of the planet and the name we just randomly choose like uh, based on your preference, the mass, the radius, and the density. Uh, so this, all this information you can observe from, from the planet uh, menu. Um, then you have the velocity and time. So how do you figure out the velocity and the time? Uh, so here, velocity is from zero to so this is the initial velocity. This is the end velocity, right? So the end velocity is uh, around one, two, three, four, four point eight, maybe four point eight meters per second, and uh, you you measure the velocity here, four point eight uh, meter per second, and then uh, you take the time t one. So you measure t one. So this is when you start. Even you start timing from here, right? But when the ball starts dropping, it's already past a certain time. 
So what you what you want to do is get rid of this part of the time. So you only measure the time when the ball when the ball start dropping. Um, so you basically measure the the time and the time between this to here. So this is let's say this is point nine second, and here is one point no two point eight. So two point eight. Okay, let me write down. So T one should be T one should be two point eight minus point nine second second. So this is T one, and you you this then okay. So this is what you record your data V one T one, and then you click one more time because I have this open. So you click one more time. So you go back to here and you do reset. Reset, then the ball will go up to again. So you click drop again. So imagine, right? And then you take record record the time, the speed and time again to put it here as V2 and T2. And then take the average of V1 and V2, average time of T1 and T2 and put the number here. So this is how you do one measurement. Just to notice um, when you do the measurement, you don't, especially for time measurement, you don't, um, just remember from, um, you have to measure the time since the ball, the ball start, drop, start dropping, uh, not from the initial uh, point. Uh, so this is how you do that. And once you're done by experiment, you can zoom out. So basically you're back to the planning again. And um, uh, so then you go to the planet and then you'll go up with uh, both mass and radius by one. And okay, so basically change the uh, increase the radius and mass. So you see, when I change the density, when I change radius or mass, the density automatically change. Just put all these numbers here, the mass, like seven times uh, 10 to the power 23 kilogram. Uh, and the radius, you can write down the radius here. Density also will be calculated for you. And then after you uh, finish this setting, then go to the main. And the click ruler. So move the bar up. So when I, this, this is the highest um, the ball can go. So this is 4.5 meters. So then you um, start drop the ball. And they will measure the uh, speed and time for you, and then click one, click one more time. You will see uh, this is speed versus time, and then you can uh, record the V one and T one uh, again, and then click one more time to reset. The ball goes up, and then you uh, click drop again to measure V two and T two, and take the average of them. So basically you have to have uh, six different planets. So every time, uh, just follow instruction to increase both mass and radius by one upward arrow click. And then record the name and uh, the, the mass radius density and then do the ball dropping and uh, write down the V1 and the T1. So basically for each experiment, you do twice, you do two trials. Uh, one is, trial one is uh, marked as V1 and T1. Trial two marked as V2 and T2. Okay, somebody is asking a question. Um, let me see. Ah, uh, so that's okay. Uh, it's fine. So you, you just measure six planet and then put your uh, results here. And then what we want to do next is plot the graph V average versus T average. Uh, I haven't taken any, atten uh, any attendance yet. I'll take after the lecture, after this.
lab lecture. Okay, so when you want to plot a, a graph of uh, average speed and the average time. So uh, do you know what's the slope mean in this graph? So when V over speed T. Speed over time? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Sorry, what was your answer? Oh, uh, I said speed over time. Yeah, speed over time. So what's the, what does this mean? Remember what you learned? V over T. It's acceleration, right? So this graph, the slope of this graph will be the acceleration. So we measure acceleration from here. And um, because you here you have seven, you have six uh, planets, you have, you measure, you, you have six average, six T average, six V average, six uh, T average. So, um, so my requirement is you just plot one of them. You don't have to plot six. Um, so you plot one of them and make sure you include the original point because at the beginning, before the ball dropping, um, so the velocity is zero, time is zero, right? So you, uh, let me draw something. Are you, what is that? So, so let's say this is your velocity. And time, yeah. This is V. This is T. Uh, so let's see this average, uh, the average speed is three. Just a random, pick a random number, but you will calculate and you measure it yourself, okay? Uh, T average is two. And then we have to say, okay, this is two, this is three. Okay, this point is here. But one point cannot uh, generate a graph, like we know at least the, at, at least two points we define a, a line, right? So then you take an initial point, which is zero, zero. Then you from here to here. This is your graph. And you did a six experiment. Just make sure you just draw one graph. That would be enough. Um, does it make sense? Professor, I had a quick question about the table that we just talked about. Yeah. So. It says it says do six planets, but in the table there's only space for three names. So does, does that mean six trials total, and only do it with three different planets, uh, or is it saying do six different planets and make a bigger table when you do it? Yes, good question. You make a bigger table. I guess I don't know the the guy who read this man is lazy to draw six tables. Six. Okay, so it's supposed to be six different planets and then two trials for each planet. So 12 total trials. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that makes more sense. Thank you. Oh, thank you. But you just need to plot one graph because if you understand the, uh, you understand why we are doing this, you, like if we, I ask you plot a, a total six graph, it's same as you plot one graph. So I don't want to, I don't want to give you more busy work. So just um, choose one planet to plot. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, so then, uh, next question is: plot graph of planet mass versus planet radius. Determine the slope of this graph. And okay. So what are we gonna do? This if we just think about this question, it's it's like very intrig. It's very confusing. I don't know uh, what does this mean. But if we look at the uh, equation we had before, so here. Uh, text. So it's basically G equal to capital G M over R squared. Okay, so this one is equal to this one, right? And then uh, we want to do 
we want to use uh, plot the graph of a planet mass versus planet radius. Um, so what you're gonna do? Okay, so when they ask you plot a graph, you don't combine them. Every time you just plot one graph, that's enough for this lecture. You don't have to plot all six. If I don't specify, you have to do all this. So you just plot one. Um, so the same as uh, question 12 and uh, question 13. I just wanna make it clear. Uh, so they ask you planet mass versus planet radius. So basically, Basically, what they ask you is, um, so m over r squared, r squared, um, what does this equal to? So if from this equation, if both sides divided by a capital G, it should be uh, capital, uh, It should be a G over capital G equal to M over R square, right? This is slope. So what is slope? The slope between a uh, slope of planet mass versus planet radius square is G over capital G. So they ask, this is the slope. And they ask you, uh, what's the significance of slope time capital G? So if this is slope over capital G, time, this is slope, right? Times capital G. So it's going to be little g, which is the acceleration. So this is the significance. So the significance of slope time capital G is the uh, acceleration. Um, so what happens to the acceleration due to gravity on planet as it becomes larger? So we know um, another one. We really have to write a lot of stuff on the screen. So what happens is, uh, so we know F equal to mg, right? So when the, uh, when the gravity becomes, what happened to acceleration? Then the gravity becomes larger. So when the gravity becomes larger, acceleration due to gravity, so the gravity, gravity force is F, right? When it becomes bigger, when this might increase. When this might increase, how I could increase. The little g should be increased, right? So the, the acceleration will become larger when the planet becomes larger, uh, when the, plan, the gravity on planet becomes larger. So this is this question. I just uh, want to notice, uh, like give you a short notice when you answer those questions, just write the question and then answer below. Don't just give me an answer. Um, just write down, you can just, uh, yeah, copy paste the uh, the question and then answer your questions below. That'd be nice. Um, okay. So the second one is uh, uh, to exploring acceleration due to gravity on planet with same radius but different mass. So in this case, we're gonna uh, keep the same radius, but we are changing to different mass, right? Okay. Now we go. To How to clean the 
Yes. So we uh, zoom out. So we have a So here, um, go to the primate. Primate, we go to the minimum radius. Go. Is it working? Yeah, I guess. It should be four, right? Four point five. Okay, now it works. So when we when we do this, when we do the a second table. We keep the radius always four times ten to uh, the power six meters, and we uh, start from the smallest mass. This is the smallest, so we uh, record the mass here and the density here. Then you can just uh, take the density from here, and then uh, we zoom in and ruler, and then let the ball drop. And click this one, and you will see the you will see this grid, and you can read the speed and the time. Make sure the time you read is from here to here, not from here to here. Okay. Uh, so what we only what, what we care about is the speed is here, that height, and the um, time from here to here. So record here and do one more batch, uh, one more chart trial and then you record the v2 and the t2 and take an average of them and after you're done click this one and reset and zoom out go to planning and increase the mass by one up row, uh, arrow up click so now it's seven so you do the same thing again uh, record the mass and the density and do the measurement to zoom in, um, ruler, and let the ball drop. So you take the uh, record the data here, and also you, you will have to do six different climate uh, for this table. Apparently, they only give you three uh, empty car, empty rows, but you can fill by yourself, right? Uh, if you don't know how to insert a table. Uh, let's assume you are working on uh, maybe things. Okay, let's do a summer attendance. Hold on. So let's say you don't know, you don't know how to insert a table. Let's, let's assume you're using Word, right? Insert a table. Let's say you want to have a uh, six, uh, one, two, three, four, five, 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 five columns and six uh, rows, assigned rows. Just click here. And then you automatically have a table like this. So you just fill the planning name and the uh, mass, radius, density, and, and whatever. Um, so, so this is how you make a table. Um, so after that, after you record, uh, record all the data and uh, uh, finish this experiment with six different planning, and you try to answer the question here. Uh, so number one, question number one. By increasing climate mass by maintaining constant radius, you are in effect increasing the climate density. Okay, let's go here. Uh, zoom out. Climate. So when we are increasing, let's say that we we keep the radius the same, right? And we increase the constant. 
And we can see when we increase the calcium, the density is increasing as well. Can tell that, right? Uh, what the effect that this increase in density, increase in density has to have, have uh, average time for the ball to fall through. So you, when you have a, um, when the planet is more condensed, which means it has a bigger density, then it will make the acceleration even bigger, right? When the acceleration is bigger, um, the ball will drop faster, right? Uh, let me write down something here. So question one is when increased density. Increase density. Then you will um, increase the uh, gravity. And then you will increase the uh, liturgy. Then you will then increase, then the, uh, the ball, then ball drops faster. Faster. This here, so it's clear. So this one is for question nine, right? And um, plot the uh, graph V versus T and determine the slope of this graph. What does the slope of this graph tell you? Concerning the relationship between acceleration due to gravity on planet at the increased density. So again, you plot a, a V average versus T average. And the, what we want you to answer is the slope of this graph uh, with the, the uh, with the relationship between acceleration, relation between acceleration due to gravity and the increased density. So when you, um, so basically in this graph, you will plot uh, one graph with all the six, uh, let me see. You, you will plot one graph with all the six points you have here, make sure. And then you plot this because every, let's say, uh, Um, so let's say the original is this one, right? We have a graph like this. Oh, um, actually, actually, I'll start from here. I should start from, so let's see my color, changing color. So let's see the first one. Draw. What happened? So what happened is like the first one, let's say this one, when we increase the density, so you get a slope like this and then, and then this. So the graph you show here is one, then one like this and then like this. So you can tell the slope here is like a, a very, very smooth. And when you increase the uh, density, then the slope become like more um, steep and then it become more steep. That, that's because the, the, that also tells you the acceleration is become bigger, right? Because the V versus T is acceleration. Um, does it make sense? Yes. Okay. Uh, so, okay, next. Uh, what, what is the name of such a body, a planet, which is so dense that it's difficult to escape its gravitational force of attraction? So nothing can escape. So what's the like, planet you guys know? Really, nothing can escape like a black hole? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, right, it's a black hole. 
Um, so the next is a check accuracy of your data point in a graph produced from table two. Linear equation motion, uh, this. So basically what they want you do, because you already get your um, data point from here. And you do, when you do V over T, that's your acceleration. And they want you to check if you get the accurate result. So they provide you with another uh, equation. So you can use this one to calculate uh, little g and try to see if the uh, match, they're matched. So, uh, so here dy is the distance, which means 4.5 because the ball, the height of a, of a ball dropping is 4.5 meters. So dy is 4.5 and v, vi, this is initial speed, which is zero. <clears throat> t average, so zero times T average is still zero. And uh, so 4.5 equal to one uh, over two G times T average. So you can ca calculate G, right? You can put a name here, mass here. Actually you don't really need it in the mass. Um, uh, you use this one T average, T average over, over V, sorry. So V average, um, sorry. Um, v average over T average, this is the result from uh, table two. You can calculate little g. And this g planet is you use uh, this one, d equal to half g planet T average. You still use T average, but this time you just use uh, dy. And then you can get a little g. So uh, what I want you to do is show your calculations. So just don't give me, um, so basically this, is, this, this column is a little g, this column is also little g. I wanna see if these two are matched to, like are a match each other. I mean, apparently they wouldn't be identical, but at some point they will be very similar because we are trying to figure out, uh, try to calculate one constant. Uh, but based on like the, Experiment, experimentalist, which is you guys. Uh, so you can maybe get a slightly different uh, numbers, but it should be fine. But these two should be close. So I just wanna like uh, um, adjust one more time. This G you calculate from dy equal to half G T every, uh, squared. This little G you calculate from table two. So V average divided by T average. It's also little G. So then you finish this table. Uh, no. So we're gonna go back to the previous stage. Uh, yeah, so then, then your, your work is done. Any questions? Okay. Do we have to upload any um, screenshots from the simulation like last lab? Uh, you don't have to. This time you don't have to, just uh, show me, okay. Uh, so what you need to do is finish this table and then plot a graph. This only need one graph. And the plot, uh, this also need a one graph. And then you finish table two with six uh, points. And then plot a graph. This one can have six, uh, sorry. Um, so can have six uh, data points. This one and uh, um, then what else? Oh, you answer the question at the same time. Don't forget the questions. Just list the question and tell, and then answer your question below. What is name of such a body? And okay, so this one, and then you will um, uh, include the table like this, but I want you to show your calculation when you do the calculation to calculate little g from this equation. I want you to show your equation, how you get this one. So that's all the required, um, required um, materials from your lab report, I want to see. So other than that, your conclusions, I haven't agreed yet, but I may be great tonight. Uh, then uh, I'll see your conclusions, your introduction a little bit. Yeah, you can make a little bit introduction as well. Um, so yeah, that's it. Any questions? Mm -hmm. If you have any questions, you don't, okay. Velocity at the end of the line. Part one, let's see. Part 
part one, do we record the velocity at the end of the line? End of the line. I mean, velocity. Uh, actually, I'm not very sure that you asked, but see. So when you're, let's say you're here, you're like here. And the ball drop. So you see the velocity here, right? This is the velocity. You take the, uh, let's say this point, we you immediately look at this point. We want to check, we want to record its y axis and its x axis minus this part. So let me get the graph. Okay, let me get the graph. Yes, yes, that's correct. We need to add the six total rows for each table. But then, uh, yeah, it says six planets. Yes, like, they require you to do six planets. So every time you do V1, V1, V1 T1, it's one batch. You do two batch, two batches. So you basically do the same thing. You don't have to change the parameters. You don't have to change the mass. So after, you see, this is one measurement, right? And you reset and it drop again. You don't have to change anything. Just reset and do it one more time. Okay, uh, any other questions? <clears throat> if no, then we take attendance, okay? Uh, I have to stop recording. Uh, recording. Stop recording. <clears throat>